Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Corey and I wanna to talk to you about part two of this Albert King study that we're doing. And in part one, we talked about how he's the king of three strings, I called it, meaning he could bend notes or just play notes on three strings in one little area of the pentatonic scale and just have solos for days and you'd never get tired or bored. He made it interesting. We worked on it in the part one. I'll put a link below uh, so you guys can check that video out too and then put them both together and it'll really make sense. We're gonna use the song, I'll Play the Blues for You as the backing track. Uh, and that's really where I pulled this lick from as well. Great lick. We're gonna talk about how we can manipulate it, make it our own, have a lot of fun with it. Um, Simplicity is the name of the game here. Not a lot of flashy stuff going on, but this is really what can make you sound legit, I think, and simple. You know, so let's just add it to our solos when we can, add pieces of it. I'll show you how to do all that in the lesson. But before we jump into the lesson, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. I upload content all the time. We do weekly live streams. Ask me questions here. Tell me what you want to see uh, as far as lessons and gear demos and that sort of thing. And don't forget to visit my website in the links below. Also, there's all kinds of links, gear I use, you name it. But let's stay in touch. Let's have fun. And let's jump into this Albert King lesson. All right, let's jump into the lick. But first, let's talk about a few other things. One, of course, is this hair that I'm growing out. It keeps getting in my face. And uh, I'm at that weird stage. You know, I want to grow it, but it's almost too much. <laughs> so that's going to, we're going to have to deal with that, contend with that. Bear with me on it, okay? <laughs> uh, another thing is we got to talk about the chord progression. Now, in the first video I did, I explained the chord progression, but let me do it again. We're in G minor. Then it's going to go to a C minor. And then back to a G minor. Then it's going to go to B flat for a bar, D7 or D7, however you like, back to C minor, and then back to G minor, okay? Now, the thing that you need to think about is that G minor is the relative minor to B flat. So what goes for B flat major goes for G minor and vice versa. So this lick is largely out of, is pretty much solely out of G minor pentatonic. which is also the same as B flat major pentatonic. All depends on how you emphasize it and what you target when the particular chord's going by. I'm not gonna go into a big music theory lesson right here because I don't want you to get glazed over and be bored of tears because you wanna play Albert King and have some fun, all right? But let's talk about the lick. Now, if you go back to my YouTube channel, you're on it already, but go there and see the video, let's see, it's a pentatonic lesson I did a few videos before this one about how to kind of play it pentatonic one in a different way. So this, this lick kind of links up to that, it starts to hint at it a little bit. It goes. So it takes a little bit of that thing and then kind of puts a regular scale twist on it, right? Something you're used to playing. See, there it goes out here again. Um, Somewhere my mom is angry at a 14-year-old version of me trying to grow my hair out. Either way, the rebellious guitar player lives on. <laughs> so we're going to start here on this, uh, this G note, just way up there on the root, third fret, first string. But think about this. You heard me manipulate this lick throughout the chord changes that are going by. So always be thinking about this. Get the lick first, and then we're going to talk about how to maybe use it over different chords and how to, you know, I call it silly putty. Stretch it out, do some things with it. All right? So the lick goes like this. That's the first part of it right there. You're going to go first string, third fret, uh, second string, third fret. So you're not going to walk it down like you normally would. You're going to go first, second, then walk it down. Just like you're practicing the scale. Five, three, five on strings three and four. Then B flat, third string, third fret. G, fourth string, uh, fifth fret. And then what I do is I use my second finger to play that D note there on the fifth fret, fifth string. And Albert has this wonderful way of it, sort of water, water falling off of his hand. And he kind of digs in on that fourth string, actually third string. put my hand on the picking my picking hand on the camera here and what kind of healthy dose of alternate picking go back 
back to my fretting hand here. Here it is. Okay, so get the lick, and then we're gonna jump into kind of how to play it over maybe a few of the chord changes. We can roll the track and sort of talk about how we can manipulate it. All right, let's check that out. Okay, so now we wanna put this lick over the chord changes, and I got the track pulled up as well, and I'm even gonna slow it down a little bit. I found that as I've done these lessons with you guys, you seem to like me sort of you know, showing you the application, talking you through it as the track plays. I have the ability to slow the track down a little bit. We'll do that. And um, to see how we can really take one simple Albert King idea, put it over all the changes. And we'll even kind of talk about some of the ways I played it at the top, all right? So if we have that first chord, G minor, we take the lick. It works well over that. We can even finish it off going up to the root note. Maybe walk the scale back up. Then the C minor comes around. Maybe I wanna land on the root of that chord, which is a C. But the inspiration was from the lick. Or maybe I wanna slide up with my first finger. That's a really great technique as well. Back to the minor. G minor, that is. Then it goes to the B flat. And you can almost hear the chord changes happening as I play that lick. That's the idea. It all sort of lives inside of that. Then it goes back to that C minor. A B flat works well against that chord as well. Like for instance, if maybe you were implying a minor seven chord, sh uh, chord shape or chord tone. And then back to the G minor. So it's all about getting inspiration and using a lick that you learned from one of your you know, heroes or someone that you look up to as a guitar player and putting it into your own playing. All right, so let's pull up the track and see what we get here. And I'll walk you through at normal speed. Actually, let's slow it down right from the top. And here we get. So a lot slower. G minor, lick. Finish it. Now, right there, maybe end on the B flat. That works well against that G minor. Here's the C minor. Back to the G minor. B flat. Easy for me to play. Back to the C minor. Back to the G minor. Speed it up. Here we go. C minor. Maybe a blues lick. Here's our main lick. B flat. Up to the D. Basic pentatonic stuff from there. I'm a one man show here, so sometimes my brain goes looking at a camera or making sure I'm recording and I screw up. But hopefully I made up for it in the earlier part of the lesson. All right, so that's a really, really fun way to kind of use that lick over top of that Albert King track. But what if we're playing a blues, okay? So maybe we're. Or maybe we're playing a G7. And we want to swing it. So 
something completely different that was inspired by something I learned before. That's really how I think most of our heroes have done it over the years. They maybe took a saxophone line that they learned from a big band thing or maybe something a singer sang and put it in and manipulated it. That's really the freedom in the, uh, that you have and that you want to exercise when you're playing any kind of blues or any kind of improvised music. All right, so take that lick, have fun with it, and use it not only over this kind of groove, but over a shuffle or anything else that you want to do. Draw inspiration from it. That's how like our favorite guitar players, in my opinion, learned. I'm sure they heard something from a record that inspired them or from someone they played with. They put it into their own playing. And you're probably saying, well, how the heck do I do that? I just know what you guys show me out here, you guitar teachers on YouTube. But that is sort of the missing thing that a lot of uh, students I run across don't know how to do. So. I try to show you a little bit at the end there about how you might want to put it into a different uh, style or maybe in a different key, that sort of thing. It's all really important. Have an open mind. There's freedom in all this stuff. There's no rules, okay? Again, I always say if you can play it with your toes and it sounds like music, then do it, okay? Don't just get stuck to this lick over this song. Learn it there first and then take it somewhere else. All right, that's really, 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 really important. You guys got to do that, okay? Awesome. Hope you enjoyed that one. I sure did. Albert King's one of my heroes. All right. I hope you dug that lesson. There's so much more where that came from. Just go buy a bunch of Albert King stuff. Go stream it. Do whatever you got to do. Check it on YouTube. And you'll see where folks like Stevie Ray Vaughan came from and people like that. Once, once I heard Albert King, I was like, oh, there's Stevie Ray right there. That's why I wore the shirt. It all comes full circle. I love the shirt. I love Albert King. And I love teaching this stuff because it's just these simple ideas that can really open up doors. Maybe you're having some trouble really translating your scales to, to blues solos and that sort of thing. Sometimes a simple lick or an idea like this can really help. All right, I'm Corey Congilio. Thanks for hanging out on the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on another lesson. Peace.